Hello and welcome back to another episode of World Traveler Cooking. Some of you may have noticed, sometimes I do Iranian food here, and Nowruz is coming up. Nowruz is the Persian New Year. One of the traditional dishes for Nowruz is Zhreshik Polo, which is a chicken and rice dish with lots of saffron and other spices. So, this is, in my view, a great example of Persian cuisine, and uh, it has particular um, connections to the New Year. So, this is what we're going to make today. Um, now, before you get overwhelmed, note that basically we make this in three parts. So what seems like a lot of different ingredients and a complex method is actually not that complex at all. It's just that you're making three dishes and you're assembling them, them together into one. So um, the first part is we are going to make a saffron rice. So the ingredients here are rice, water, which I don't have pictured. Um, actually, no, the turmeric is for the other one. Uh, saffron, uh, bay leaves, and some salt. Right? Um, the um, chicken is going to be chicken, salt, pepper, turmeric, saffron, and onions. And then we will have candied barberries, where we have barberries, a bit of sugar, um, and some cinnamon, and a little bit of juice from cooking the, um, the, the chicken. This is a delicious dish, um, but yeah, I will cover each of these pieces um, sort of in turn. We'll typically start with making the uh, rice, and then once the rice is steaming, then we will um, then we'll start the chicken. Once the chicken is a you know has been going for a few minutes, once it's been stewing for a few minutes, then we will uh, start the barberries. So that's that's the way we'll do this. So uh, first step. Um, normally you would use a basmati rice. I don't have a basmati rice, so I'm using a medium grain. Um, I am using a medium grain white rice. The texture may come out a little bit different, but it should work. It just won't have the really nice long strands that you might expect to see in Persian cooking. At any rate, um, let's get started. So the first thing we are going to do here is we are going to wash the rice. And you really do need to wash the rice here because since we're going to steam it, we really don't want it to stick together. So I'm going to just go ahead and stir it up with my hands and then pour off the liquid on the top. And we're going to keep doing this until it's pretty clear. I figure it's probably going to take four or five washings. So when I get done with that, I'll be back and I'll let you see how clear it is. So now I have washed this like four times and you can see it's pretty clear. So I'm going to just pour off most of the water and we are going to parboil this rice for about four to five minutes. We're not fully cooking it. We are just, uh, we're just uh, kind of getting it um, softened a bit. And then we will pour off the rest of the water and we will uh, steam it. So I'm going to add some salt and uh, four bay leaves to this rice. So I have added um, a tablespoon of salt and we're just going to let this boil. Uh, I did say bay leaves, but uh, we're not going to add bay leaves. Um, I misread my notes. So it's just going to be salt in the rice. We'll be back when this is boiled for about four to five minutes. While we are waiting for this to finish boiling, I'm going to take my saffron and I'm just going to pound it with about a quarter teaspoon of saffron. And we want to crush it to release the, the flavors. Um, ideally, this would be done in a mortar and pestle, but if you don't have one, you can just take a nice big blunt 
spoon handle and pound it. And after a little bit of time, this will be ready to add our boiling water. We're just going to add a couple tablespoons of boiling water. And this is starting to look nicely pounded. So I'm going to add about a couple tablespoons of boiling water. And uh, then we will cover this and let it sit. So I have now drained out any excess water using a sieve. I'm going to stir up this rice really fast so that it's broken up. And then I'm going to mound it into the center as a, in the form of a dome. And then, going to poke five holes in it to... And then we're going to cover it and let it steam for another 45 minutes or maybe more. So traditionally you'd use ghee or clarified butter. If you don't have that, and I don't have any today, you can start with regular butter and clarify it. Uh, it says about a tablespoon of ghee, so definitely start with more if you don't have ghee. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up and we will clarify it just before we add our onions. So that we'll let this cook and then we'll skim it off, we'll add our onions. Now, clarifying butter is pretty easy, but basically you have to remember butter consists of three things. It consists of butter fat, it consists of milk solids, and it uh, includes some milk liquid. So we boil off the liquid, and then we will skim off the solids. So once we do this, the butter fat will accept a higher temperature without leading to burned residue, which nobody likes. So let, let it form this little bit of skim, then we're just going to skim it off with our spoon. I'm actually going to use a metal spoon to skim it. And there we go. Now I'm going to add my onions, which I have cooked, cut into eights. We're just going to cook these until they're nice and golden brown. Once it, is start, sorry. Once it is starting to brown, we will add a good sized tablespoon of turmeric and we'll stir this around and make sure everything cooks and becomes quite yellow. Then, we will place our chicken on top of the onions. I have washed and dried the chicken. Should do that also if you're making this dish. And then I will sprinkle some saffron on top. So I like to take, sorry. So I like to take a good generous quarter teaspoon and I just run it in between my fingers and sprinkle it over the top. Like that. And it goes on. Heat goes up, and timer gets set for five minutes. 
and yeah, be back in five minutes to add some water and uh, start the stewing process. So after five minutes, I added 150 to 200 milliliters of water. I'm going to go ahead and add my bay leaves now, and then we'll cover this and let it stew. And of course, if you have not seasoned with salt yet, now is a good time to do that. And we'll just put this back on top. Salt and pepper to taste. I'll add pepper later. So when we have half an hour or so left on the chicken, we will start to heat up another tablespoon of ghee, or if you want to start with like two tablespoons of butter, and skim it, you can do that. We've already skimmed this at least once, but it looks like we could use skimming at least one more time. Once our ghee is hot, we will add Now, barberries are supposed to be red. These ones have become black over time. Um, it's just, I've had them too long in the pantry. Um, but they'll be okay. They'll still give the same, um, they will still give the same, uh, they'll still give the same uh, flavor. They just won't give the nice red color. I guess I could add some sumac for that, but I don't think I'm going to. So once I've stirred these a few times, I'm going to add maybe a bit over a tablespoon or maybe like three teaspoons or so of sugar. Because remember, these berries are very, very sour. And I will stir this around for a bit. Once the sugar all looks dissolved, then I will uh, add a dusting of fresh cinnamon. So in goes the dusting of fresh cinnamon. Stir it again around for another couple minutes. And then we'll take it off. As I say, <coughs> the one thing about barberries is if you keep them too long, they do go black. These ones have gone black. That's all right. They still taste good. Still taste absolutely delicious. So I will still use them, but just as a note, you're not going if, to, if, if they do go black, you won't get that wonderful red color that we really like. So, I'm actually going to put these off to the side. Well, maybe, maybe I'll sprinkle some on top. And they're becoming just a little bit reddish, but not red enough. That's a little easy. Just let it cook a little bit longer. And this will be it. I'm going to now take these off the heat and we'll set them aside in their own dish so that we can use them when we're ready to put everything together. Next up, I will mix a part of the rice with the, um, with the saffron water I set up earlier to make the wonderful uh, yellow color. And we'll set that up also. So now I'm going to take some rice. I'm going to put this aside first. And I'm going to mash it into this water here. And you can basically play by ear. Start with a fairly small amount. And you can add more if you, if you feel like it needs it for the color. You're just looking for a nice, even, bright yellow saffron color. Yeah, it looks like I got it pretty well on the first try. So I'm just going to set this aside, and then this will also be used to garnish. So we will garnish with both the berries, which ideally would have been red, but oh well. And these 
the, the saffron rice. So the first thing we do is we uh, mound the rice up. Then we're going to garnish the rice with the saffron rice on top. And it's fine if it doesn't cover it all. The goal isn't necessarily to have a big layer of saffron rice. Think of it as sort of more of like a golden lining on top of the rice. Now ordinarily, I would like just sprinkle these berries all over, but since they're black, since they've oxidized black, I'm mostly going to create a nice uh, ring around the outside. I think that'll look okay. The berries here are here both for color, which they're not really adding to this time, but also just as importantly for flavor, and they will fill that role very nicely, so we definitely want them on it. So I'm just going to create kind of a, a ring, and I'll set the other berries off to the side, and they can go on top. Now, I wasn't able to get all four on here and make it look nice, so I'm just going to do it as it is. Um, you can then maybe top it with just a little bit of the onions, if you like. Maybe just a few more of the berries. Ideally, again, these should be red, but they turn black. That's okay. And here we have our Jurassic Polo. Next up, the taste test. And now for the taste test. I'm going to start by serving myself a chicken leg and just a bit of rice. I'm not going to overdo it for the taste test. I will probably serve myself some later. So, here we are. First of all, I'm going to taste just the white rice. So the white rice that's cooked this way is very um, rich. You get the very savory flavors from cooking it with the salt. It's very nice. Grabbing it with a little bit of the barberry. Now the barberry and rice by itself is absolutely delicious. Uh, you get sour notes from the barberry. Um, I'm going to try some of the chicken. This, this is delicious. This combination brings everything together. You have a little bit of sweetness from the sugar added. You have the sourness from the berries. You have the sweet spices. You have the salt, um, saffron. This is an absolute symphony of flavors. I like it very, very much. I'm definitely going to cook it many more times. Unfortunately, it's very hard to get fresh or relatively fresh dried barberries here in Indonesia. At any rate, if you find this content interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you cook this dish a little differently, please let me know how you do it differently. This is always wonderful. Um, otherwise, bon appetit, and see you next week.